Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to build a letter writer inside Microsoft Access. We're going to see how to write, print, email, and store letters in your Access database without using Microsoft Word. Carter from Kansas City, Missouri, one of my gold members, writes, My office sends a lot of written correspondence to our clients. We can't just use email. Is there a way to store all of this in my Access database? I know you frown upon attachments, so storing Word documents in the customer's record is a bad thing, right? Yes, generally I recommend against storing anything in your database. Word documents, PDFs, images, any of that stuff. Access databases are designed to store data, information, but not necessarily to store objects like Word documents and stuff like that. I've got whole other videos that discusses this topic in detail, but to answer your question, you don't want to do that. So what I'm going to suggest is, unless you need some crazy options that are in Microsoft Word, why not just use Access as your letter writer? You can write all of your correspondence in your database, print it right from there, email it right from there if you want to, and, and it's all stored right in your tables. So unless there's some specific need that you have to use Microsoft Word, don't use it. If all you're sending is basic correspondence, written letters, welcome information, collection notices, that kind of stuff, just do it all in Access. Let me show you how I would do it. Before we get started, a couple of prerequisites. If you haven't watched my free blank template, my Tech Help free template video, go watch that blank, okay? Then the contact manager where we learn how to store contacts for each customer, that'll teach you basic relationships too, go watch that one. And go watch invoicing only because I show how to set up a basic report the way that I like it. Even if you're not going to be doing invoicing, go watch that video too. These are all free. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch these and then come back here. So go on. Go watch them. Go. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. And by now you know what this is and how I built it. We've got our customer list, right? Open this up. We've got a customer form. In each one of our customers, we've got contacts. And we've got orders, all right? And under the orders, we've got the invoice report. That's what I wanted you to learn how to set up that report, okay? Now, in the contact manager, right now, we're just using this for every time we talk to them on the phone, maybe, or if they come in and we have a chat, called about a job, came in for an interview, and there's notes down here. We can use this to store our correspondence, too. It's not just necessarily for tracking every time we talk. We can put whole letters and written correspondence and stuff in here. So what I'm going to do is redesign this a little bit so it's better for writing letters. Let's just make it a little bit bigger, right? Let's make this a little bit larger. Slide this out like so. I'm going to move the follow-up up here. It can be in the form footer or the form header. It doesn't matter. It's still bound to the record that you're on. Okay. And uh, you can make the description a little bit bigger if you want to. Notes. We'll make this larger because we're going to be writing our letter there in the notes section. Maybe a little bit taller too. And... Uh, since it's going to be a letter writer now, I'm going to put it back to basic white. It just looks more like uh, you're writing, you know, correspondence on a white field like that. Maybe a little bit bigger than that. Let's go down to about there. Okay, it looks good. All right, close that. Save changes, yes. Open it back up again. All right. Now we come down here, and then we'll put in here a collection letter. All right, now you just come down to the bottom. All right, dear, who am I on? Let's see here. Oh, that's me. Okay, so Dear Richard, it has come to my attention that you owe uh, $90 on your account. Please pay now. You have to excuse me. I just uh, spilled coffee on my laptop. Well, my dog spilled the coffee on my laptop yesterday, and so my space bar is sticking. I got a replacement coming. Okay, and then cordially, you want to leave room for a signature there, that's fine. Collections department or whatever. Department, there you go. Okay, so this is now where we're going to be putting our written correspondence. And you can make this bigger if you want to, if you want to make this, you know, make this this big. Let's see here. So the whole thing fits in there. You can make a separate form for this too if you want to. You can make a small one. That's formatted for just contacts and make a bigger one for writing letters in. Whatever you want to do. That's why you're using Access, right? So you can build your own database. All right, but if I click on collection letter now, there you can see the collection letter. 
Now, I want to print this, so we're going to need to make a report out of it. But before we make the report, I'm going to make a query because I'm going to include some other fields on the printed correspondence, right? I want the customer's name. I know I typed Richard there, but I want first name, last name. I want their address on the report, right? So let's make a query that's got all of the information that I want to put in the report together in one spot. So create, query design. And that came in messy, didn't it? All right, I hate that. All right, so I'm going to bring in the customer table and the contact table. Let's do contact first and then customer. Okay, let's bring in the contact ID. Let's bring in the notes, because that's the letter that I just typed out, right? Let's bring in the contact date. We'll use that for the date on the written letter. So if you print it up again in the future, it'll put on there the date that you actually printed it the first time, right? You'll know when you sent it too. Okay, now the customer name, I'm going to put first name and last name together. I'm going to use string concatenation. I should have put this in the prerequisites, right? String concatenation. That's how you put two or more strings together into one. All right, if you haven't watched that string concatenation video, if you've never done that before, go watch that now. Pause this one, come back. All right, so right here in this column, I'm going to zoom in, Shift F2. I'm going to make this cust name, my customer name is going to be colon, first name, and quote space quote and last name okay that's how you do concatenation i'm gonna hit okay let's just see what we got let's run this guy right real quick all right there we go i'm seeing all of them. there's the customer name now it'd be nice for my report if i only saw the one contact that i'm on i don't want to print all of these out right i just want to print out just the one okay so to do that we're going to put a criteria under contact ID, and that's going to be equals, let me zoom in again, shift F2, that's going to be equals forms, exclamation point, contact F, exclamation point, contact ID. That's how you get the contact ID off the contact form that's currently open. Okay? Again, I should have probably put this in the prerequisites too, right? There's another video for you to go watch. Get a value from an open form. All right, you got a form that's open. You want to grab a value from it, like the contact ID. Okay. Okay, so I'll hit OK down here. And now when I run this, you can see I'm only seeing the contact that's open. Right, the one that's open here in the background. Just this one, the collection letter. Okay, back to design view. Let's save this guy while I'm at it real quick. Control S to save. Let's save this as my contact letter Q. Contact letter Q. And now let's put the address fields together. Now, address one is just going to be address. So I'll come right here. Let me close this box. I'll come right here and go address one colon is just address. If you have an address two, add that. I didn't bother adding an address two in mine. I usually put, if it's a two-line address, I just put it together in the same box. I don't care. For me, address two is going to be, let me zoom in again. I know these are really small to see. Address two is going to be city ampersand and a space, and state, and space, and the zip code. Hit OK. And then address 3 is going to be the country. So address 3 is just country. OK. Now if I run that, you can see I got all the address lines right here. Customer name, address 1, address 2, address 3. Address 3 is blank for me because in my database, I'm in the US. I don't bother putting US in the country field. Okay, so this is all set to go. This has the one record in it that we want to print, and it's based on the open form back here. So now I can make my report off of that query. So let's go over to our template over here. I got this blank R that we set up in the invoicing video, right? I'm going to copy and paste this guy. Copy, Control-C, paste, Control-V. I'm going to call this my contact, contact letter R. And let's design this guy. Okay, now it already goes out to 8 inches. I think I got margins set to narrow. Let's see. Yep, narrow margins, so it's a quarter inch on each side. You can change it if you want to. So 8 and a half is the actual physical edge of the paper. You want to go just shy of that. I don't think we're going to need a report header and footer, so we could turn those off for this one. Right-click, turn report header and footer off. We will need the page header and footer, though. I want to put the, uh, the return address and my company logo on the top of each page. All right, so let's go to report design. Just grab a label. 
I'm going to put the return address over here. All right, computer learning zone, shift enter, 123 Main Street, shift enter, Fort Myers, Florida, 33966. Okay, I'm going to go to format. Let's make that a little bit bigger, maybe 18 point. And right justify it. Right align it, I should say. I always say right justify, it's right align. Okay, let's make it black so you can actually read it. Change the font if you want, do whatever you want, right? Well, let's make this access learning zone. Okay, let's put the company logo over here. Now, normally I preach against putting images and graphics and stuff like that in your database. I'm against storing them in records. Okay, if you've got like a, a, a customer profile picture or product pictures, don't store all of that, those tons and tons of pictures. But if you've got a company logo and it's a nice little small graphic file, feel free to include that in your reports. That's in the design of the database. That's different than storing images inside the records of your database, okay? So I got a nice little tiny Access Learning Zone logo I'm going to put right there. So let's go to Report Design, Insert Image, Browse. All right, I got a nice little tiny guy right there. Look, it's only 27K. It's tiny. All right, pick that guy, hit OK. Put it right there. There we go. See, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Don't be storing, you know, 5,000 different two megabyte GIF files in your database. That's what I'm talking about when I say don't store images and files in your database. Like your Word documents, Carter, right? You don't want to, if you've got, you know, 5,000 customers and each one's got 10 letters that you've written and each Word document is three megabytes, that's a lot of space. Access isn't designed to store that kind of information. Okay. Okay, in the details section is where we're going to put the information for our letter. And let's go to the add existing fields. And, oh, I didn't bind this report to a table yet, did I? Let's come over here, open up this guy, the, the report's properties. Go to record source. We're going to bind this to the contact letter Q that we built. That query that has the one record in it. Okay, now I can add existing fields. Let's start off with the customer name and the address. Just grab all four of those things together. Let's click on the first one, shift, click on the last one, click and drag and drop right there. Now we can get rid of these, right? Goodbye. We're going to make these wider like that. And you can snuggle them up next to each other if you want, make them a little bit bigger if you want, whatever you want to do. Now I keep this one around because it's got the format that I want. So I'm going to double click on the format painter and go format, 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 format. Because by default, it brings in that uh, that border around it and all that and it makes it gray. No, I don't want that. Now I can get rid of you. Goodbye. It's the only reason I keep him around. Slide this over here like so. Where, wherever abouts you want the customer's to address going. And you might have to kind of guess where you want it. I like to line this up. I use window envelopes, right? I got window envelopes that are printed with my return address on them. And I, I three-fold the paper and I stick it. And I want to get that address right inside that window. So if I save this now, if I go right-click print preview, right? That might have to go down a little bit lower, maybe down to about here. You get the point, right? You got you to gotta line this up exactly where. And you can measure it if you want to, or you can just kind of eyeball it and guess. That's up to you. You can, don't forget to include your margins when you're measuring, though. All right, and, and and this here is an inch. Here's another inch. You got a quarter inch margin on the top. You'll get it, though. You just gotta print a couple and waste some paper. <laughs> okay. All right. Back to design view. Let's save what we got going on here. Save Control S. Next up is the contact date. Add existing fields. We're gonna need the contact date and the notes. Let's bring these two guys in. Drop them right down there. Yeah, we don't need the ID on this, so we'll get rid of those labels. All right, contact date's going to go next, right about there, and notes is going to go below that. Slide that down a little bit. Contact date on on printed correspondence, I like a nice, long, full, like, full-length uh, date. I don't want just, you know, 1 slash 1 slash 20. I want Wednesday, February 14th, 2020. I want it to look nice. It's written correspondence, right? What does it look like right now? Red click, print preview. Yeah, that's what you got there. And we got our borders back on there. That's the default. But I don't want that on a printed correspondence, right? So first, let's deborder these things. Click, click. Okay. Let's left align this. Oh, nope. Format, left. Okay. And let's put a custom format on this date. Let's go with uh, DDDD. That is the day, day of the week, spelled out like Wednesday, comma, 
space. My space bar is not working again. All right. The full month name, MMMM, -M -M -M, space, the day, like 20th, right? DD, comma, space, YYYY, tab. Now, Access puts little quotes and spaces around the, the commas there, but that's the format code that I'm using right there. Okay, see? The day, month, day, year. That is all covered in my... Which video? Let me go see. Well, I cover it in a bunch of different classes, a bunch of different videos, like date, add, date, diff, that kind of stuff. But here's all the codes. I'll put a link to this down below in the link section, the date codes. All right, but if we take a look at what we got now... You can see that. That's pretty, right? Monday, September 20th, 2021. See? Okay. And you can see there's our body right there. All right. Now we got to make that notes feel bigger. Close that. Slide this all the way over here. All right. Horizontally, it'll go as big as it goes. There's a can grow, can shrink property. Now, by default, each of these fields, if you go under format, find can grow can shrink where are you can grow can shrink is both set to yes that's fine okay there's also a can grow can shrink for the section too right there all right by default it's yes can grow no can shrink so it can't get any smaller than that but it can get bigger if it needs to and that's fine okay so save that let's take a peek again here we go looks good right Want to put some stuff down here in the page footer? All right. Design view. Let's come down to the bottom. Page footer. I like to put like a, a horizontal line going across. Let's grab the horizontal line tool right there. Click and drag right about there. Looks good. Maybe some additional contact information down here. All right. Something like this. All right. Uh, I don't know. 239, 555, 2222. Uh, you know, uh, amicron at gmail.com. Whatever you want to put down there. And then we'll format paint to get rid of that gray. Maybe align that to the right. Let's see. Oop, I wasn't clicked on it. There we go. That was clicked on you. No, go back there. Okay. Want to put page numbering over here? Sure, why not? Grab one of these boxes or whatever. Copy, paste. Slide it down here. Right there. All right, open it up, come in here, name, we'll just call this PGNM, whatever, page number. The control source is going to be equals page ampersand of ampersand pages, just like that. That puts the page number there and the total number of pages next to it. Here, I'll show you what that looks like. Save it, right click, print preview, there we go, all right? One of one, and your contact information over there. Looking pretty good now, right? This will get as big as it needs to get if you've got more stuff in there. Let me close this. Let me uh, just copy and paste this here. We'll just go copy, paste, 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 paste. All right. Now, if I go back to the, oh, we got to be on this one, remember. Now, if I go print preview this guy, see, it'll get bigger. Okay. Looking pretty good. Okay, now we need a button that we can click on down here to just quickly, easily print this. I don't want to have to go back to my navigation pane and find the report, right? I want a button that I can click on to print this. So let's do that. But first, a word from our sponsor. Who's the sponsor? Well, that's me. If you're enjoying my videos, check out my Access Expert classes. Expert 5, 6, and 7 do a lot more with this letter writer that we're building in this Tech Help video. Expert 5's over an hour long. We'll set up something similar to what we're building in this video. There's some extra additional features in here, though. Level 6 takes it another step. We do mass mailing. So instead of just sending correspondence to one person at a time, we send it to a whole bunch of people, a collection letter to everybody who owes you money. We'll have different collection letters. People that are less than 30 days late get one. 30 to 60 get another. More than 60 get a final reminder, right? You could specify the dates that you want to send them out for people. Then in Lesson 7, it'll create different groups. Let's say you want to break your customers down into what they're interested in, right? Hardware, service, software, training, whatever. Then we'll be able to say, okay, I want to send this particular letter to everybody in the hardware and software groups. And then we'll print the letters and the envelopes. 
So that's my Access Expert 5, 6, and 7 classes. Check them out on my website. There's the link. I'll put it down below in the link section, too. Okay, commercial over. I, I got I to, you know, got to put a little, I got to put a plug in there here and there, right? Okay, let's make our button. Right-click, Design View. I'm going to make some room down here for a button. Put it right there. Now, the wizard does make this button for us. That's nice and easy. Here's the button. Drop it there. This is a, a decent wizard. I don't like a lot of the wizards. I do like this one. Report Operations preview a report you can just go write the print if you want to send it right to your printer i don't like doing that i like to preview it first preview report next which report contact letter r next i'm going to put on here uh print report i know it's preview but the user's not going to know the difference print report next name the button print btn or whatever you want to call it and then finish okay let's slide you over there and close it. Save changes, yes. Go to contacts. Pick the collection letter. Print report. There it is. Pops right up. You want to print it? You hit the print button right there. It goes to your printer. Okay? Want to export it as a PDF file? Click right there. Now, there's one more thing I want to teach you real quick. Actually, there's two more things I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you one more thing about this. Then we're going to do a bonus, which is sending this by email. If you make changes to this, let's say I come in here and get rid of all this stuff here, all right? Delete all that. Okay, so that's all we got left now, all right? Notice the record is still dirty. See that pencil? That means this record is in the middle of being edited, and those changes have not been committed or saved to the table yet. So if I hit print report now, look, it's still got all that extra stuff that I just removed because... This is pulling off the query, which is reading the table, but the table hasn't been updated yet. So we have to refresh this record before we print the report. All right, And you can do that by either leaving the report and coming back to it and then hitting that. Now it's been refreshed. Now you can see there's only a little bit of stuff there, but that's a pain. So what I want to do is I'm going to add a refresh command to this button. How do we do that? Okay. Now, normally I preach VBA. I love VBA. Go watch my intro to VBA class. It teaches you all the basics of programming in VBA. It's real easy. I love it. But this is a case where the button's already made. It's a nice, simple button. We only have to add one little command. So let's right-click, Design View, right-click on the button, and go to Build Event. It's way up top here. Let me move this so you can see it here. Slide that up. Right-click, Build Up. It's almost off the screen. A little bit more. Get up there. Okay. Right-click. Build event. There it is. Okay. Build event brings up the macro builder. Okay. This is what the wizard actually creates for us. It's an open report macro. All right. We're going to add a command down here where it says add new action. And all it is is literally just refresh. That's all. All right. It's run menu command refresh. But we have to make sure this runs before open report. All right. So I'm going to close the action catalog over here. All right. See this little red, uh, red. Yeah. See this little green arrow there that says move up. Click on that. That'll move the refresh command above open report. We have to refresh it first, then open report. All right. Save that. Close it. Close this. Save changes. Yes. All right. Ready? Contacts. Collection letter. I'm going to come in here and put a bunch of X's in there. Okay. Notice the record's still dirty. I haven't left it yet. Print report. It refreshed it, and there's my line of X's. See that? That's important. Got to refresh the data, which basically saves it to the underlying table before you can open up that report or another form. Okay? That's something you got to do. Okay, now, Carter, I know you said that you don't rely on email, but I'm sure all the good people at home would like to know how we could very easily email that. Now, I've got another video where I cover sending email uh, to Microsoft Outlook using Access, and it'll actually just send the text. But since we have a nice printed report here, we can send this as a PDF attachment to an email. How do we do that? Well, let's close this. One more button. There's a wizard for this one, too. All right, let's go to the button guy right there. Here over here. Okay. It's report operation. It's mail report. Why they didn't make it Email report? I don't know. They should have. It should be email report, but they made it mail report, which is stupid. All right. Next. Contact letter. Next. All right. We're going to email report. 
next. All right, email button is the name of the button, and then finish. Now, same deal. We're going to have to put the refresh in there, but let me just show you how it works first. Close it, save it, open it up, collection letter, hit the email report button. All right, now, first thing that comes up is send object as. What format do you want to send it as? I'm going to teach you how to get around this in just a minute. Also, I'm going to mention, you may get the Outlook security warning popping up at this point. And I cover this on my other email video. I'll put a link to that down below. If you get the message up, let me see if I can find a picture of it. Okay, here's my other send email video. And I talk about this. Let me get up. Yeah, let me open this guy up here. All right, if you see this guy right here, the Microsoft Outlook security warning, it says a program is trying to send an email message on your behalf. This is just Outlook saying, hey, something's trying to send an email to me, you may or may not have allowed this, are you sure do you want to let this happen? Well, you can circumvent this window appearing by updating your Windows Defender. Okay, Windows Defender is an antivirus program that comes built into Windows, uh, Windows 8, 9, 10, 11 probably. Did I just say Windows 9? Windows 8, 10, 11 I'm sure is going to have it. But you can go down to your taskbar and then uh, go to security and then just update your virus profile and it will it will get rid of that message until the next time there's an update available so like once a month you gotta update your virus definitions but as long as your virus definitions are updated you won't see this guy okay okay i talk a lot more about this in the send email video i'll put a link down below go watch that if you want step-by-step -step instructions okay but for us right now i'm gonna pick pdf hit okay it'll make the attachment there it is okay now, it puts you here, and it wants you to type in, who do you want to send it to? Type in a subject line. Put something down here. Okay. It, it's working, but I want access to fill all this stuff in for me. Okay. So, let's cancel this, and let's edit this button. So, right-click, design view, right-click this button, go to build event again, and now here we are inside the button. You'll see all of the object options in here the parameters okay you can see there's report that's fine the contact letter r the output format we're going to drop this down and pick pdf you can send it as a text file you can send it as an excel sheet you can send it as html i like pdf all right the two assuming you have the customer form open behind the contact form you can go equals forms exclamation point customer f exclamation point email because we have their email address on that form okay subject line let's make this the description up here right so in here we'll just put equals description like that okay what about the description field message text you could put in here please please see attached all right Edit the message means do you want Outlook to pop up that send window or do you want to just send it right off the bat? You just click the button and pff, the email just goes out. I like to open up the send window if I'm doing individual correspondence. If you're doing a mass mailing, no, turn that up, set that to no. Okay? We also need to put that refresh command in here because we've got to refresh the data before we create. Oops, someone just beamed in. We have to refresh the data before we can generate that report. So put the refresh in there and then move it up to the top. And again, this would be two lines of VB code. I really prefer VB, but since the macro is already made, we'll stick with it. All right, save changes, yes. Close this. Save changes, yes. One more, here we go. Contacts, collection letter. Let me get rid of this stuff here. Delete. And email report. Here it comes. Boom. Look at that. It grabs the e email address off the customer form because the customer form is open back here, right? It's got collection letter as the subject. There's my attachment. It's got please see attached down here. You can put whatever text in there you want. All right. If you want to click on this, it'll open up the PDF. There it is. Looks good. All right. I'll close that. And now just hit send. And there you go. That's how you do a basic letter writer in Microsoft Access. You can store it. All the correspondence is stored right in your contact table. You can print it. You can email it. And you don't have to use any other programs. You don't have to use Word, right? You can do all, everything right inside of Access. If you want to learn more in the extended cut for members, I will show you how to create letter templates. 
these little things here where you can say, dear first name, it has come to my attention that you owe balance due. We'll include merge codes. I'll do two. I'll show you a first name and balance due. And then when you pick them from a list down here, hit the load button. It'll pull that information up into the letter. Fill in first name, fill in balance due, and you're all set. Then you can do different parts too. If you have document parts, certain paragraphs that you use all the time, a closing paragraph, for example, a greeting. All right, pick that, pick closing, boom, it goes right up in there. To that, then you print it, email it, and, you go, and you're on your way. 16 minutes, extended cut, silver members and up, get access to all the extended cut videos. Gold members can download these databases. How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free access beginner level one course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.